Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Mackenzie Child and this is episode two out of five in the Ruby on Rails from the ground up series. Last week we talked about what Ruby on Rails is and the history behind it. And in this episode, we are going to uh, go step by step through the process of getting your development environment set up with everything you need uh, to get going with Ruby on Rails. Uh, so let's jump in. All right, let's dive in and get our development environment set up. So just so you guys know, I am working from a fresh uh, install of OSX El Capitan uh, version 10.11. So I'm starting from scratch here and I'm gonna go step by step on how to set up uh, your Rails development environment. The following is specific towards Mac. If you're on Windows or Ubuntu, it's a little bit different. So I want to recommend a few resources to you uh, to get set up. First would be uh, GoRails.com. GoRails has these fantastic and detailed uh, guides on how to get set up for various versions of Ubuntu as well as Mac uh, OS X. So I would definitely recommend checking those out. And the next would be InstallRails.com. It's a uh, simple step-by-step -step guide uh, based on your operating system because it's slightly different between the various operating systems. And then if you click Windows, for example, it goes step-by-step uh, through the process of getting set up uh, based on your operating system. Uh, so it does tell you to visit railsinstaller.com, which is the next resource I want to recommend. Uh, Rails Installer is a project by uh, Engine Yard, and basically all you have to do, download a package, and uh, it sets up pretty much everything for you. Uh, it's pretty fantastic. So if you are on a Mac, uh, stick with me, and we'll go step by step. Uh, through the process of getting your Rails environment set up. So first, let me close these. So we're going to be using three different programs to uh, code in this series. The first is Chrome, which I have uh, already downloaded here. Um, uh, that's just my preferred uh, browser of choice. You can either use uh, Chrome, Safari, or Firefox. Uh, but please, for the sake of web developers everywhere, just don't ever, ever use Internet Explorer. All right, so iTerm2 uh, is a terminal emulator for Mac OS X. It does a few awesome things. And personally, I just prefer the look of this over the default terminal. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this. And then let's uh, open that up and uh, go ahead and install that. So drag that into the application. Whoops, I did that in desktop. Go to applications. And then uh, let's search for iTerm and open that. Beautiful. All right, so that's good to go. The next one is Sublime Text. It's a, a fantastic uh, text editor. So I'm going to go ahead and download this. Sublime Text is a paid app, but you can use it for free. Uh, it'll just ask you every so often to uh, buy a license for it. And I definitely recommend you do because uh, A, it supports the indie uh, developers, but it's also a fantastic program. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this as well. Drop that in my applications folder. Open that. Beautiful. Cool. So to get set up, uh, we have a text editor and we have iTerm as well as Chrome. Uh, so we need to now go through the process of installing a few things in order to install Ruby and uh, Rails on our system. So let's search for uh, Homebrew and go to brew.sh. So Homebrew is uh, the Description is the missing package manager for OS X. Basically, it makes it super simple to install various packages uh, on your system. So all we have to do is copy this line right here and go to our terminal, uh, iTerm, and paste that in. And then it's going to go through um, and run a few scripts. This is uh, pretty important. It says the xcrun command requires the command line developer tools. Uh, so you do need to install uh, the command line developer tools in order to work with uh, Rails. 
So if you get this option, go ahead and install. All right, let's hit done. And then all we have to do is hit return, enter our password, and it continues. Oops. And it goes out and downloads and installs Homebrew for us. All right, so the next thing, uh, the reason we installed Homebrew is so that we could install something called uh, RBM or RBM. I believe it stands for Ruby Environment. So if we go down to, let me search for Homebrew. As an alternative to uh, installation on GitHub Checkout, you can also install uh, RBM and Ruby Build using the Homebrew Package Manager. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, just to be sure, let's do a brew update. I'm sure it's up to date since we just installed it, but just in case. All right, so next we need to do brew install uh, rbm and ruby dash build. Paste that in. All right, so the reason we installed rbm is because it makes it super simple to manage different uh, versions of Ruby on your system. So by default, we can do ruby-v. Uh, by default, uh, OSX comes with Ruby 2.2.0, at least the newer ones do, but we want to use Ruby 2.2.3. So let's see, install. So uh, installing Ruby version. So how we do it, we can see a list of all the available uh, Ruby versions. So if we scroll up, uh, 2.2.3 is what we want. So the command to do that is uh, rbm install and then the Ruby version. So let's do that rbm install 2.2.3. Um, this does take a chunk of time, so uh, just be aware of that. I will uh, jump back in after this is finished downloading. Okay, so now that that is finished installing, let's uh, take a look and there's a way to set a global version. So RBM global sets the little. Okay, so the command is RBM global and then the file or the uh, Ruby version. So let's give that a try. RBM uh, global and we'll set 2.2.3. Okay, and uh, let's do a Ruby dash V. Hmm. So it's still using uh, Ruby 2.0.0. Uh, let's uh, try to figure this out together. So let's do a Google search for uh, default uh, Ruby version, not changing uh, RBM, RBM. So Stack Overflow usually has the answer. So let's uh, take a look. We're not using ZSH, so that's not it. I just found the same problem. What I did was uninstall RBM and reinstalled it. That'd be annoying uh, because we just installed it. I fixed this by adding the following to my bash profile. Okay, let me try that. So I'm gonna copy that. Um, I'm gonna do a command uh, open and then let's do tilde slash dot bash underscore profile. Uh, the file does not exist, so we can do touch uh, tilde slash dot bash profile to create that file, and it'll open it. Uh, then we do the open command again. Sweet. So that opens up uh, in text edit. So all we have to do is paste that in. Let's save that. And just to uh, be sure, I'm going to quit out and open up iTerm again. So let's uh, try Ruby-V. All right, so Ruby is uh, now on version 2.2.3, perfect. So the next thing we wanna do is uh, install Rails. So if we go to rubyonrails.org, uh, the latest is 4.2.4. Uh, so to install that, we simply need to run a command called gem install uh, rails and that will go out and fetch the latest which is 4.2.4 just to note this does take quite a long time uh, much longer than ruby usually uh, from my experience so 
maybe pause this video and then go grab a cup of coffee while this is finished downloading. Okay, so uh, that says it's done uh, installing. So uh, real quick, let's do RPM uh, rehash so that RPM knows about the new Rails version. And let's uh, do Rails-V. All right, we have Rails 4.2.4 installed. So I'm going to do something real quick. Let's uh, CD or uh, change directory into the, uh, the documents. I'm going to just create a test application real quick. So uh, let's do Rails new. I'm going to call this test underscore app. So it's creating the files for a Rails application and then it's doing a bundle install, which is going to go out and fetch all the uh, gems needed for our application. Okay, so let's CD into that test app and let's run the Rails server by doing Rails server and let's test it out and see if it works. Let's go to localhost uh, port 3000. All right, welcome aboard. You're writing Ruby on Rails. Beautiful. So everything has been uh, installed. We have a uh, text editor, Sublime. Uh, we have uh, iTerm for our terminal, and we have Chrome uh, for our browser. Rails 4.2.4 is installed, and Ruby 2.2.3 patch number 173 is installed so we are looking good and ready to move on in the series all right guys we are all finished uh, i just want to say thank you for watching this episode and be sure to join us next week when we go through uh, the basics of the ruby programming language so i just want to give a special shout out and thank you to the awesome uh, patrons of the dev tips community uh, who have sponsored this video by each pledging amount of their choosing uh, to help make all of these videos possible. The DevTips patrons uh, get access to these videos a few days early and in this particular series get access to the uh, project code that we'll be creating together. If you want to find out more and uh, join me as a patron and supporter of DevTips, uh, go to uh, patreon.com slash devtips. Don't forget to join us next week. We're, we're going to be learning the uh, basics of the Ruby programming language. But until then, keep on hacking.